In this video, we're going to show how to get mobile app to app logins working using the Curity Identity Server. So let's have a look at the overall parts of the solution. We're going to provide a, a sample mobile app which authenticates via the Curity Identity Server. Um, the mobile app will then receive a redirect URL that is a deep link to the Bank ID app. The user will sign in using Bank ID and then the Curity Identity Server will use Mutual TLS to speak to the back end of the Bank ID system. So there's quite a bit of security configuration involved and we're going, we're going to get this end-to-end -end solution working. Next we're going to get set up with the Bank ID app. So um, I always start by going to the demo.bankid.com website and there's a link here to the developer information. So this page has plenty of resources, documents, certificates and uh, other odds and ends that will get you connected to the bank ID test environment. So I've already done this for my device, um, but I will go through the main steps. So there's three things we need to do. First of all, we need to uh, install bank ID on your mobile device. Then we need to create a developer test account. And finally, we need to link the installed app to your account. So um, the way that we install the app works slightly differently for Android and iOS. And so for, for Android, what you would do is you would browse to demo.bankid.com, navigate to the developer info, and there's an APK file here that you can download and install directly. For iOS, you have to go to the App Store, download the Bank ID app, and then change the, uh, the, the host name, the server host name uh, in settings to point to the test environment. So um, it's worth being aware that Bank ID doesn't really work on emulators, you have to use a real device. So once we've installed the app, the next thing is to create a developer account. And this is done by generating a personal code. So the first time you would click this generate code button and all you have to do is enter your name and email address, click order code, and it will send you a personal code to your email inbox. You would then return to the Bank ID website, enter your personal code in here. So I will enter my one, which is this value, uh, and then log in. So as you can see, I, I now have a developer account. And the final thing is to link Bank ID on our device to our account. And the way that we do that is issuing a Bank ID here. So what this is going to do is pop up a QR code. Uh, we would then scan it on the mobile device. And then the mobile device will ask you to input a six digit security code. Let's have a look at what this looks like. Um, so first it asks you to generate a personal number. I just entered one based on the date. Then we hit issue and there's the QR code. And on your Android dev device or iOS device, you would just scan this code. Um, the app will then ask you to input a six digit security code. So you uh, create your own security code, which we'll use later. Um, so fairly straightforward when you know how. Um, I've actually shared my device via Zoom. Um, and if we have a look at it, this one is all set up. And as you can see, this is ready to use. So, so we're now all ready to use Bank ID to do an app to app login. Next, we'll return to our diagram and we're going to configure the mutual TLS connection between the Curity Identity Server and the Bank ID API. So this involves some certificate details. They're all explained on the developer page in this Relying Party Guidelines document. Uh, section 8 has all of the certificate details. And basically what we need is to present a client certificate from the Curity Identity Server. And we also need the Curity Identity Server to trust the SSL certificate of Bank ID. So uh, there's two certificate files involved. So this is the client certificate and key file, the P12 file here, and this is the root certificate issuer of Bank ID. So we're going to configure these in the Curity Identity Server. All of the details you need are available in the document. For example, the P12 file um, has a private key password of QWERTY123. So we're going to configure all of this in the Curity Identity Server. So what we'll end up creating is a Bank ID authenticator. Let's make that a bit smaller. Um, but first, let's get the certificate details configured. So we're first of all going to go to a server trust store, um, go to the file section, 
find our root certificate file, drag it in there and save this. And as we can see, this is the, the root certificate for the SSL um, connection we're going to make to Bank ID. So uh, these certificates are quite easy to manage in Curity, you just drag and drop them in. Um, next, we're going to need a client SSL key for the P12 file. So um, again, we're going to upload existing, drag that in here, give it a name, bank ID, uh, and we also have to enter the password, which is qwerty123, let's type that in. And there you go, so, so that's all of the mutual TLS configured, nice and easy really in QRT, once you know what the files mean. Um, the next thing we'll do is create a, an HTTP client to manage the connection and present the client certificates. So create this. So what we're going to do is uh, make sure this says HTTPS, make sure it uses the trust store so that it trusts the root certificate we just configured and also uh, make sure we present the client certificate, which we're doing down here. And this is the role of the HTTP client to look after the security of the connection and also the reliability of the connection. So once we've done that, we're almost all done. And the final thing to do is create is to create a bank ID authenticator. So let's do this, give it a name of bank ID. Uh, scroll down. And make sure we use the bank ID client we just configured. Make sure mode equals test because we're test creating to the test environment and you may want to include some extended attributes and allow any type of bank ID uh, option just for test purposes. And that's it, that's the connection fully configured now. So we'll commit those changes and we're ready to move on to the next stage. Next, we'll get started with our mobile app. If we go to Android Studio, we have a small code sample, and this will act as a client app in an app to app login flow. Um, out of interest, the code sample exists in our public GitHub repositories, so you can download the sample and run it yourself. Um, let's go through some key points of the code, because what's interesting about the sample is it uses the Hypermedia Authentication API. So we start with the OAuth configuration, which contains the usual fields, client ID, redirect URI, that sort of thing. If we look at the main activity, there's a, a button to start the login process. This builds the standard OpenID Connect, connect uh, redirect message with client ID, redirect URI, etc. in the query parameters. Um, but what's interesting next is that it sends this request as an, as an API request and this be begins an authentication workflow or state machine that goes through a number of states based on the authentication factors configured. So um, this sample is quite basic but it, um, to give you an idea of the API requests being handled, it, there can be a number of them that do various things such as redirects, uh, polling, dealing with the final response, rendering forms and elements and so on. It's worth being aware that um, at Curity we'll be doing lots more work to make this as easy as possible to work via our, our SDKs. So the idea is that you should just plug in the Hypermedia Authentication API and uh, have to write very little code yourself and meanwhile you'll have full control over the user experience while the user logs in and it's very secure as well. So um, we'll go through some of this shortly. Um, finally, it's worth pointing out that um, I'm using an ngrok URL here. Um, if you're not familiar with this, let's have a quick look in the Curity website. This is very handy for mobile development when we want to um, use local host URLs for APIs or the identity server um, and be able to contact them from the mobile device. So that's what I'm doing here. So next we're going to focus on getting this mobile sample working. If we return to Android Studio, um, we'll see that uh, because our sample app is an OS client, we're going to have to configure that in the Curity Identity Server. So we'll start by copying this client ID and we will go to the clients section under the token profile. New client, we paste that value in. Paste in there as well. And 
interesting part about hy hypermedia clients is that we need to add some different capabilities. Usually for mobile app, you would just add the code flow, but we also need to include the hypermedia authentication API capability and client credentials. Client credentials is used for an attestation feature that we'll describe shortly. Um, the redirect URI is a dummy value. We'll just copy this here. And if I scroll down, hit next, we'll select no authentication because it's a public client. And we'll, we'll select a couple of authenticators. We're going to use bank ID, um, but we'll also select username just to be able to demonstrate selecting an authenticator later. And finally, we, we need to look at client application settings. If we scroll down to the end of that section under advanced, this is where we need to configure a feature called client attestation. And all this means is that there's some cryptographic checks against the signature of the Android app that prevents any malicious apps from spoofing us and trying to authenticate as our app. So what we're going to do is configure Android attestation here. So um, there's an article in the Curity uh, website that explains the attestation settings for Android in uh, full detail. So um, refer to that for the detailed information. What I'm going to do here is just copy in the value. So we need to provide a package name, which we can copy from the manifest file. Um, we need a, a policy, uh, an attestation policy. So we're just going to create one. Let's call it Android. And um, we're just going to use the, uh, the basic developer options from the article. Uh, and for production, you would use a stricter policy. Finally, the one thing, um, so a couple of things we left to do. One is to disable, we're going to disable attestation validation, some of the stronger checks, because uh, our Android app will not be in the, in the Play Store. So certain more advanced checks can't be made against our development app. Um, finally, we need to, to populate this signature digest field, which links to the signature of our Android app. We can do that by running this um, command, Gradle W signing report. This will output um, a SHA-256 hash. We can just copy the value into the admin UI and then our app will be trusted. So this is the Hypermedia API attestation configuration all complete. So we can now commit those changes. And the only thing left to do is to test our app. So after all of the security configuration, we can now run the app. So let's go back to Android Studio. Um, as you can see here, I'm connected to my Google phone. We have to run Bank ID on a real device. So um, uh, we can't use an emulator. I'm also um, sharing my screen via Zoom so that people can see what's going on. Um, so let's kick off the app. And so our, our app presents a start login button. Um, when we click this button, it will send the Open ID Connect message we looked at earlier. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to show a few intermediate screens uh, just to demonstrate an authentication workflow though it, you know it's possible depending on configuration that you could go straight through you know clicking the start login button could deep link all the way through to the bank id app but we're going to show a few intermediate screens the first one is to select uh, a way of signing in because there could be more than one we're going to select bank id there's also the standard bank id options of logging in on this device or a separate mobile device we're going to select the first one, which will deep link us through to the Bank ID app. Once we do that, uh, we have to enter our six digit security code that we created earlier when we uh, linked the installed app to the developer account. So let's enter that. And then we return to the app. And so the app manages polling uh, and the authentication result is returned via a backend mutual TLS call, which is why they, we configured that earlier. If we click the authenticated button, we receive an authorization code. And after this, it will be very standard OAuth where we swap the code for tokens and use the tokens to call APIs. 
So um, a lot of configuration, but at the end of it, we ended up with very simple code in our mobile app and a very uh, easy to extend solution. So I hope all of that made sense. Thank you very much for listening.